So hello YouTube, um, the good Christian friend I frequently mention in my videos invited me to attend this seminar done by the Creation Ministries International. Now if you don't know who they are, they're sort of like the Discovery Institute. And they do talk about very similar things. So similar, in fact, that I will say the speaker, his name was Calvin Smith. Um, Mr. Smith's presentation was Ken Hovind, word for word, verbatim. Even the PowerPoint was similar. Now you might be asking, well, what is it you've been doing if you haven't been making videos this past week? I've been doing research, a lot of research, and I was hoping to present some of that research to Mr. Smith in hopes that, you know, he wouldn't present some lie that he made or, you know, just to clear a few things up. Seeing as his material was a Kent Hovind copy and paste, I was fairly confident at that point that I could answer quite a few of his um, misconceptions. And I told them as such, I said, well, if you have any questions, that's the way I phrased it, about evolution, because it seems that you do present a few, um, then I would be happy to answer them to the best of my abilities. And he said, well, I don't have any questions, these were all meant to be rhetorical. and. Then he goes off into some other tangent, I don't even know how. The one point that really caught my attention, well, there were several, but he used the words, evolution states that a fruit fly turned into a butterfly. At that point, I knew I instantly did not want to talk to him any further. So you might be asking, well, what am I doing now? If I was so pissed, why didn't I ask him questions then? As I said, I'll explain that in another video, but this video will be the first of many videos refuting every single one of the Creation Ministries International's claims made in that presentation. I am honestly so sick and tired of seeing these that I will take it to my own hands to refute every single one of their claims. And it might be a fruitless endeavor, I might not do a good job because I am not a qualified person in any of the sciences, but I will guarantee that I will try my best and correct my mistakes if I make any. And hopefully it should be an interesting experience. So of all the points you've seen Kent Hovind make, and in this case, of all the points Calvin Smith made, which point should I start off with? Well, how about the point that probably disturbed me the most? When I got out of, out of the seminar, as hopping mad and as bloody pissed as I was, um, I asked my friend if he thought there was anything there, as in anything, that deserves some sort of merit, some sort of truth, some sort of attention. Um, and he said, well, yes, there was one part that really caught my attention, and that was to teach the controversy of evolution. What? So for those of you who don't know, um, the young earth creationists will frequently make the claim that evolution is not a scientific fact, it is just a belief based on faith, similar to Christianity, and that since they are just both different sides interpreting the evidence, that equal time should be given to a Christian viewpoint in a science classroom which would be the idea of the intelligent designer. So instead of focusing purely on evolution, they should be taught the controversy of evolution and its flaws and have a sort of alternative proposed to them, which is the intelligent designer. And by the way, the intelligent designer is God. The scariest part is that when I took a look from a neutral perspective or from a perspective that's more biased towards the other end of the spectrum, it seems so innocuous. It seems so fair. Like, why can't we teach alternatives in the science classroom? Why can't we give equal time to the idea of an intelligent designer as we do to evolution? First of all, regardless of what you believe, the science classroom is not a place where people get to decide what to believe. The science classroom is a place for people to learn scientific fact and nothing more. There is no controversy involved in science. It's either it's proven or it's not. Science has a zero tolerance and no negotiation policy when it comes to its claims. 
if it has not been peer-reviewed, if it did not follow the scientific method in any way, then it is not published in textbooks and not counted as a scientific fact. And besides, creationism, or sorry, intelligent design, was already ruled out of the textbooks in a very landmark case known as Kitzmiller v. Dover, where at the hands of a conservative Christian judge, no less, he ruled that the intelligent design idea was not science, and it was creationism that tried to work its way into science textbooks in hopes of pushing a creationist agenda into the science classrooms. Now, whether you care to admit this or not, the intelligent design movement has zero proof in regards to supporting its claims. Not one single piece of evidence that can be quantified and physically tested to support the idea of an intelligent designer. There's plenty of evidence against evolution, okay, and even if all of that were true, which it's not, but if it all were, then what the hell does that prove? Nothing! Even if evolution wasn't true, that still doesn't automatically make the idea of an intelligent designer true. Negative proof, guys! What the hell? And any positive proof used to support the idea of an intelligent designer, for example, irreducible complexity being one of those, so all of those are essentially just arguments from ignorance. Every single one of them is based on subjectivity. So even if you think that, okay, part of the human being is just too complex to explain through natural means, that doesn't mean that we can't explain it in due time. Or perhaps a little more insulting to some people, just because you are too stupid to understand how a certain phenomena works doesn't mean that science can't explain how a certain phenomena works. And it's not that scientists or atheists like myself have such a problem with accepting that there's an idea of an intelligent designer and that he might be God. We have a problem with the fact that none of that has been proven as of yet. Seriously, have you guys heard of one piece of peer-reviewed literature done by a creationist in support of some sort of intelligent designer or any aspect of creation science? I ask only for one peer-reviewed journal. Have you guys heard of anything of the sort? I didn't think so. But you know what aggravates me the most about the intelligent design movement? It's the fact that they're preaching this all in the name of fairness and equality, when they themselves are the biggest hypocrites. They refuse to go through the process of peer review. They refuse to follow proper scientific procedure and the scientific method and instead appeal to school trustees and to parents who face it, have as much formal education in the sciences as the kids that are currently being educated. You know, in the name of fairness, I think we should follow with the creationist logic here and propose other alternatives to not only evolution, but to other theories taught in the science classroom, like gravity, for example. Because I don't think gravity exists, it's just it's clearly birds don't follow gravity. You know, Maybe I should propose the hypothesis that the invisible pink unicorn allows things to fly like birds, so we can just drift off into the night, like Superman. Yeah, should we teach that alternative to kids? Well, why do you think that I would be stupid enough to accept the idea of an intelligent designer as some sort of alternative? So, to anyone who supports ID, and to anyone who follows through with the intelligent design movement. I have, well, a few words of wisdom that you should consider. How dare you? How dare you insult scientists and their hard work, which has to go through the meticulous process of peer review before getting published, when creationists can slide through free? How dare you insult Charles Darwin by equating his work to that of unqualified, uneducated, and quite frankly, slimy creationists who have a known reputation for lying. How dare you insult the intelligence of atheists around the world by trying to slip creationism into the science classroom? And perhaps most important of them all, how dare you insult the very meaning of the words equality and freedom by equating the consequences of your intellectual laziness and your ignorance to actual discrimination? How dare you commit this act of blatant hypocrisy 
by discrediting actual scientific facts that have been proven time and time again in favor of an alternative that has thus far been unsupported and unproven, while at the same time shunning all other alternatives that are equally as unsupported as yours and can easily be used in place of your alternative. Fuck Creation Ministries International, fuck Calvin Smith, fuck the Intelligent Design Movement, and fuck you if you think we should still teach the controversy. May the truth always be heard.